I yawn too much. So for this tutorial, we're going to talk about what are the node parameters and how they work. To start off, we have to create our emitter. So let's go over to our emitter panel right here to the top left hand in the corner of the screen next to the demons button and let's select the circle emitter. Okay, so as soon as you do that, you notice that you get a lots and lots of values and information to the right side of RailFlow under your node parameters panel. Now we're going to go through all these one by one just to tell you explicitly what they are and what do they do. So the simulation parameter is going to exhibit either active or inactive. There is a third option known as cache, but we'll get that on in a later tutorial when we actually know uh, what it would be used for. So. If you have the simulation parameter set to active, obviously when you simulate it will be on and if you have it set to inactive, it shall not be on anymore. So there you go, simulating and simulating nothing. So basically an on off switch for your emitters. So the position parameter is going to change your position exactly based on what you input it for the keys. So for example, let's say uh, I want to move this a little bit in the X and Y position, but I have to move it in exact increments to my scene. So I'll place right here in the first increment, uh, I'll place it at 2.8750. Okay. And now I think for the, it's either the X or the Z axis. I'm not sure, but for this axis, I'll put in, for example, 2.005. Okay. Now on the Y, I want to move it up exactly to about 2.33. So we'll type in 2.33. So with the position parameter, it's pretty straightforward on what it does. It just basically uh, changes your position based on what keys you put it in to the exact amount. So this is pretty helpful when I have to line up projects and emitters exactly to the way I want. So yeah, that's the position parameter. As well as for the position parameter, the rotation parameter is exactly the same, except this time it will just rotate your selected object based on its values that you put in. So let's say, for example, uh, let's put this up to 180 degrees way up in the air. We want to have this thing shoot up. So typed in 180 and simulate it. There you go. Now it's at 180 degrees in the air. Let's say if we want to place it to the side a bit, let's put in 90 degrees. How about that? Okay. Simulate that. And there you go. So just like the position parameter, the rotation is exactly the same, except this time it'll rotate your object. Now scale is going to be the exact same thing as position and rotation editing wise. Same thing goes for shear and pivot, except this time it will control the amount of scale you can use. So for this time, we'll put in for the first parameter, we'll select a number of, let's say four. Okay, let's put in four. It's pretty wide now, at least four times what it was originally. Let's make it a bit taller. So we'll go over to our Y axis right here, which is the middle parameter. And we'll set it to something like, uh, I don't know, um, 3.5 sounds pretty good. All right, and now we'll go over to our last parameter and we'll, let's see, we want to make this thing pretty long. So let's put it to about uh, mm, 6.5, okay? There you go. So that is the scale parameter. Pretty straightforward, isn't it? All right, on the shear. So shear is basically going to shear whatever you have that is selected. So for example, we have this cross here selected and let's go to our first parameter and let's put in a value of 2.5. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so it sheared it pretty, pretty good. Let's go to our second parameter over here, which is the Y axis. And let's put in a value of, let's say, I don't know, four. Okay, so let's zoom out here. Whoa, it looks pretty cool, huh? All right, now let's go over to our third parameter and set in a value of two. Okay. Now here's where the weird things start to happen with shear because shear is only going to, well, physically shear your object, okay? It won't actually scale it into size. So in layman's terms, see how this looks all 3D? In reality, it's not. Mind equals blown. Pretty cool, huh? Oh yeah. So this works pretty well for creating things that are diagonal if you want to set them at a more diagonal angle or hills and or the like. So that is the shear parameter. All right, now the same thing is going to apply to pivot as well as it does to all of the other parameters for the node itself. And pivot is going to, well, change your pivot based on where the tool is. So in layman's terms, that basically means, for example, if I want to rotate this object right here, I can rotate all wimbly and nimbly. Ha, huh, it's pretty cool. And if you notice, it's rotating actually at the pivot point, which is on the very, very last geometry piece right here on the uh, tail, okay? So now let's say, uh, hey, what if I want to change it to the middle? You'd go over to the Y axis in the pivot parameter and set it to something like, I don't know, let's say 
0.5. Let's see what that does. Okay, a little bit too low. Let's set it to something like one and a half. All right, so it's roughly in the middle now. And there you go. That is the pivot. And it's now been changed because you've changed the parameters in the node. So now let's experiment around with some other stuff. Let's change the pivot to the, I think this is the Z pivot. I'm not sure. No, the X, because X, Y, and Z. Uh huh. Now I remember. Let's change the X to something like uh, 4. Okay. And now let's change the Z axis to something like 2. Or, yeah, 2. Okay. So let's zoom out of our scene a little bit here. Select the rocket again. And now let's start screwing around with just moving it. So. Look at that, it's a rocket moving around in freedom of space because we've changed the pivot. So now it's pivoting around in different places. I like that. So that is the pivot parameter. When life gives you lemons, don't make lemonade. Make combustible lemons that burns your house down.